Right, I'm Errol Barnett at the CBS Broadcast Center here in New York as we continue to follow other breaking news this hour. All four international border crossings between the U.S. and Canada have been closed. This is in western New York in Niagara Falls. Police there continue to investigate a car crash and fire at the Rainbow Bridge. It's one of the four bridges there uh, connecting the two countries of the U.S. and Canada. The bridge located less than a mile from the famous waterfalls. Now, at this stage, sources tell CBS News two people who are inside that vehicle are dead. Federal authorities are investigating exactly what took place. Witnesses say they saw the car swerving erratically as it approached a border checkpoint. We understand the car was coming from Canada and headed toward the United States. There is some conflicting uh, reports on that topic. New York Governor Ga uh, uh, Kathy Hochul says local, state and federal officials are investigating all of this. At this moment, there is an increased security posture in the area. For example, at Buffalo's airport, cars heading there are undergoing security checks. And it is clear that travelers in this area can expect addis additional screenings. Sergeant Kerry Schmidt of the Ontario Provincial Police Highway Safety Division joins us now to bring us the latest on this. Um, I mentioned that it's unclear which direction this car was heading, according to some witnesses. So share with us the latest information you've been able to gather on the Canadian side. Yeah, there's a lot of information, uh, a lot of speculation as well. Uh, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection uh, are dealing with that situation along with the FBI on the U.S. side. As a result of that situation, we are dealing with uh, an ongoing uh, closure of the uh, border crossings uh, that connect Western New York, New York State, Buffalo to uh, Ontario, Canada. Uh, right now, uh, the Fort Erie Peace Bridge uh, is closed in, in Buffalo, just south of Buffalo. The Niagara Rainbow Bridge, the Whirlpool Bridge, uh, along with the Queenston Lewiston Bridge, uh, just north of, uh, uh, just up from uh, Niagara Falls or Buffalo, New York, are all closed uh, due to the ongoing situation at the Rainbow bridge uh, the um, you know the investigation which is being uh, held managed I guess by the the FBI uh, on um, on the US side with uh, US Customs and Border Protection you know again our uh, Canadian uh, CBSA Customs and Border officers uh, will be working uh, together on any partnerships that need to be done in, in this investigation. I don't have any clear timelines on how long these closures will remain. The, uh, we're waiting for updates uh, from uh, the investigators. Uh, and at this point, obviously, anyone who's traveling, planning on uh, Thanksgiving uh, journeys that will involve crossing uh, the, uh, the international borders between Canada and the United States, uh, please uh, wait and stand down until we have a clear picture of uh, timelines of when this uh, might take place uh, and then obviously when we can uh, relieve the backlog of the traffic that's already waiting. So we don't want to see a large uh, you know, gathering of people waiting because that's a, a dangerous thing as well on the highways in the areas leading up to the borders. Uh, and uh, you know, we're really in a waiting game here as the investigators are doing their important work uh, and trying to secure the evidence and, and try to verify exactly what took place earlier this afternoon. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, at the at this point, with us speaking with each other, it's only about 3 p.m. on the East Coast, so we're only a few hours from this incident taking place. I'm sure there's an incredible amount of work that needs to be done. You mentioned there's a large amount of traffic backed up on both sides. How busy a crossing is this part of the U.S.-Canada cool. border? Yeah, this is a massive crossing, a, a significant amount of uh, commercial traffic and personal traffic uh, cross. Now, the Rainbow Bridge is for passenger vehicles. Uh, no commercial truck traffic is uh, on that bridge routinely or, or at all. Uh, all the commercial truck traffic is going through the Peace Bridge at Fort Erie on Buffalo, as well as the Queenston Lewis to uh, just uh, just up uh, the way from Niagara Falls. So that's where all the commercial truck traffic is, and we know how much uh, volume that can uh, obviously uh, you know, deteriorate quickly and have long extended lines. And so queuing of traffic on the QW, uh, which is the Queen Elizabeth Way on the Canadian side and the interstate uh, highways there leading into the uh, 
Canadian border crossings on the western New York side, you know, that truck traffic it really has nowhere to go. Uh, there's not a lot of convenient alternatives. They're short of going all the way around Lake Erie or all the way around Lake Ontario to uh, Windsor, Sarnia, Detroit, or up towards Kingston and uh, Thousand Islands, you know, up towards uh, uh, Quebec. So, uh, again, uh, truck traffic will be waiting. Passenger traffic will be waiting as well. And obviously, with all the uh, activities planned for tomorrow with Thanksgiving, a lot of people are trying to get the jump on the weekend. And unfortunately, uh, not a good uh, day for uh, travelers that are trying to cross the border right now. Yeah, Sergeant Schmidt, as you say that, we were just looking at a map. And it's clear that if this is a major transit point between the U.S. and Canada, there really is nowhere else to go if this crossing is closed and remains so you know, for the next few hours, perhaps for the rest of the day. Do you have a sense of just how much traffic moves between this key location uh, that connects the U.S. and Canada? Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have traffic volume numbers, uh, but I know anytime there is a closure or even one border crossing, the other crossings become uh, overwhelmed very quickly. And, mm. you know, in the, in the situation here with all four border crossings now effectively shut down uh, for several hours, you know, that is a lot of, uh, of commerce, a lot of trade, a lot of traffic. Um, and I, again, as we are just thinking about uh, the Thanksgiving weekend, everyone else may be looking for their extended vacation, visiting family and friends, people trying to catch uh, flights out of the Buffalo Crossing, crossing the border. That is going to have significant, um, you know, headaches for, for travelers and commercial truck traffic and trade. So, uh, yeah. again, we just ask people to, you know, take your time, stand uh, by, and wait for announcements as to when the borders reopen. And then you can also monitor the uh, U.S. Uh, Customs Border uh, Protection uh, website, uh, as well as the Canadian side, for estimated wait times. And I don't know what the wait times will be, what kind of uh, extra scrutiny might uh, take place if there is going to be uh, changes in, in uh, checkpoint uh, timelines. But again, you're going to need a lot of it over the next uh, you know, day or, or coming days, depending on how this investigation unfolds. Yeah, I think folks hear you loud and clear. If you know anyone who is traveling in this area or planning to in the next 24 hours or more, flag to them that's not a good idea at this point as, as officials on both sides try to figure out exactly what happened. Sergeant Schmidt, we can see footage from the U.S. side of the border crossing. Uh, we can see a strong police presence. We can see what appeared to be like a, a booth um, that had some smoke billowing behind it. The early reports were that this vehicle swerved, crashed, or flew into the air, crashed, and then was, was burning. Can you help us understand just the road and the bridge that connect the two and what things look like there? Well, it's a border crossing on a bridge. And now, again, in terms of the vehicle's movements, that's not for me to speak on or speculate on in terms of its movements. Uh, and that's going to be up to the FBI and uh, the U.S. Border Protection uh, to uh, determine exactly what movements are, are on there. But anyone who's crossed the border knows it's uh, usually a, a slow drive across and you meet the, the guards at the gates. And uh, I've seen pictures and videos of damaged uh, houses where the... Uh, uh, you know, officers would be uh, working. So um, I think we all kind of can, can visualize what it might look like. I know there's uh, unverified videos already online that I've seen, and I'm just uh, waiting for confirmation as to what's going on. But uh, I'd rather wait for the authorities uh, that ha can speak to this specifically to comment on it before any more speculation. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. And perhaps that speaks to why it's unclear which direction this vehicle was moving if the road is, is kind of shaped in a way where you wouldn't know. I know that times that I've crossed between uh, New York State and Canada in a vehicle, um, sometimes it's clear and it's one single direction, but sometimes you have to go around and turn corners. Um, so perhaps right. that's, that's one of the reasons. Uh, Sergeant uh, Kerry Schmidt, we appreciate you connecting on the phone with us on this breaking news event. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.